Knits podcast. This is a podcast where I share knitting and crocheting and always all of the yarny goodness that I love. Uh, today is Wednesday, March 20th. Happy spring. It is officially spring now. Uh, so entering a new season that is always exciting. It's been a few weeks uh, since I podcast last. I did not intend it to be so long, but the month of March has definitely gotten away from me. So I'm really excited to uh, have some time today to share what I have been up to so far this month. Uh, if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. And if you're new, thank you so much for stopping by. I appreciate each and every one of you taking some time uh, to to listen and to hear about my crafty adventures. It means it means so much to me. So other than YouTube, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as CB Crafty Girl. Uh, all of the patterns that I talk about, as well as the places you can find me, will be linked in the show notes down below. All right, I think that's all I need to say at the top. Uh, we will get into some knitting and crocheting, and I actually have some cross stitch today, which is a little unusual, but bear with me. We're going to just hop right in. So uh, first, what I am wearing, uh, this is the Kaiza Tee. It is a pattern by This Bird Knits. I believe I made it in 2022. Uh, the yarn is Hobby Lobby Authentic Hand Dyed. I want to say the peach blush colorway that might not be quite right, but it is a peachy color. So um, this is the first of two Kaiza tees that I have made. And um, I really do like this sweater a lot. Uh, it is, uh, it took, I think two or maybe a little over two skeins of yarn, fingering weight yarn, and it's knit at a bigger gauge. Um, but a really nice sweater for spring, so really enjoying uh, pulling this out again and wearing it. So on to some finished objects. So I did share in my last episode that, uh, or maybe, yeah, or maybe it was my February round or February February uh, recap that you know, about what I was going to plan to work on for the month of March. And March is National Crochet Month, for whatever reason. <laughs> so I decided to work on a crochet project. And I have a crochet project. Actually, I have a couple on um, my Make Nine board, uh, my new projects Make Nine board. And if you want to hear all about my Make Nine boards, there are several earlier videos from this year that talk all about those. But the crochet project I wanted to try is called the Rustic, uh, Rustic Cable Stitch Table Runner. Uh, it is by Sea Love Share, and I got it on Etsy, and I finished it. So it is about let's see 11 inches wide and for length I stopped uh, after so many repeats I don't remember how many repeats but I measured it on my a couple different tables and I liked the length that it was so it's approximately 43 or 44 inches long uh, the yarn I used is Bernat softy chunky in the natural colorway uh, let's see. So the pattern is paid, a paid pattern on Etsy. And that's, that's where I first discovered it. Kind of looks like a, um, toga when I have it across me this way. Kind of silly. Uh, so I first discovered it on Etsy or maybe I saw it on Instagram and just really fell in love with the photo in the pattern. Uh, you know, she shows, this on a table at Christmas time. So with some green greenery and some reds in there. And I just thought, oh, that is lovely. So I saw that and I got the yarn, you know, in December deciding that I wanted to make this. The pattern is free on her website. So again, see, love, share. But 
I did go on her website when I was trying to figure out how to work the crochet cables and it it was very hard to get through with all of the pop-up ads so I'm, I'm very glad that I paid for it on Etsy and um, it, it was not too terribly expensive but it, it was worth it uh, to make this so it's not a beginning crochet project and i i have been crocheting for a number of years uh i really got into crocheting when my daughter jenna was probably four or five and she is 19 right now so yeah it's been a few years since i've been crocheting uh that's that's the first yarny craft that I really fell in love with was crochet uh, and then got bit by the knitting bug and definitely took off with knitting but I did want to try this so again not beginner not a beginner crochet pattern there are front post and back post uh, stitches in here which you see all along here and the cable itself is made up of those front and back post stitches uh, but executing the cable in cross stitch, I thought, well, it can't be, it can't be harder than knitting, right? <laughs> well, I, it took me a while to figure out how to cross it, uh, because you are always crossing it from behind. And I just had such a hard time wrapping my brain around this. Um, so I did... I guess I did do some digging and try to find some different tutorials and I may have linked a tutorial on my Ravelry page. Um, I do wish the designer of the pattern had linked a video tutorial. She kind of had a couple pictures, but I, I didn't find the pictures super helpful. I, I guess I kind of want to see step by step where it goes and see someone actually doing it. So, um, you know, tried and tried over the course of probably two hours, you know, just to get through the first part, the first cable part and gave myself a massive, massive headache. But, <laughs> but I did not want this pattern to um, conquer me. I wanted to conquer it. So uh, I kept at it and then came back to it the next day and it was a little easier and by the end after doing you know several of those cable repeats it got it got much easier where you know i i didn't even need to look at the pattern or anything so um it wasn't it wasn't too hard in the grand scheme of things but just wrapping my brain around those crochet cable stitches was definitely challenging but I am very, very happy with the finished project. Uh, I did block it. When I did crochet it at first, the cables were much poofier out. And I thought when I blocked it that they lay, they lay flatter, which is going to be nice on the table. The pattern itself called for six skeins of Bernat, the softy chunky. And in the pattern photo, her, her table runner, you know, drapes over the table, but I didn't really want that. I just wanted this more for just a decorative piece, you know, going down the center of the table, but I didn't want it to go over the ends. So like I said, I kind of put this on my table to measure and see where I wanted it. So I only used four skeins. So now I do have two skeins left of this um, softy chunky yarn and we will see <laughs> what that becomes someday. Um, no plans for it right now. This, you know, yes, the learning the cable took me some time, but in the grand scheme of things, I believe I started it on March 5th and this was done on March 10th. So crocheting with a bigger needle and crocheting with chunky yarn, it definitely went much faster. And so this crocheted up really, really quickly. So I was very excited to work on this and complete this. Um, I'm pretty proud of the crochet cables on here because I, I've done front and post, front and back post stitches before, but I don't think I've ever made these like big chunky cables before in crochet. So that was that was kind of fun and kind of exciting to uh, to work on a new technique to me in crochet. Uh, so. 
this this probably will be put away and I will pull it out next um you know next December early December and find some little greenery and maybe some you know a few little red shiny balls or you know shiny ornaments or maybe a couple small red candles I think that would just be so so pretty uh, so it works on our kitchen table it looks good on our little uh, coffee table in the living room we also have like a side um like a side coat I guess you would call it a sofa table, but it's by our stairway, kind of a skinny table. It looks good on that. So this project could go on three different tables that we have. So I think I think it will definitely get some use. So that will be put away till next, next Christmas season. All right, so that's finished object number one. Uh, finished object number two is a pair of socks. I'm calling these my Surrey socks because they were made with uh, Surrey silk alpaca yarn. Uh, the pattern itself is called uh, Indulgence Socks by Z Witch Z on Ravelry. And this is a free pattern. Uh, this was very simple to follow. Uh, I don't believe I followed the the heel though I just did my traditional heel flap and gusset uh, this is made it's a DK weight or basically a DK weight but holding a fingering yarn and a it's supposed to be a mohair silk but I used um, a Surrey Surrey lace weight and it is this beautiful fluffy pair of socks I hope you can see see the halo on there, that fuzzy fuzziness. Um, these are so nice. And I thought maybe I had made them a little too snug, but they are not too snug. They actually fit really, really great. So I am super pleased with these. Yeah. And, you know, indulgent, you know, it's named indulgent socks and yeah, having a pair of socks or slippers like this is very indulgent so I think it's a very appropriate name so I'm curious have any of you knit um any Surrey socks um these are just yeah so so nice and so soft so very very happy with these uh this was another project from my make nine board this year from I have three boards so this is from my make nine sock board so really excited to have those complete. Uh, the rest are crochet items. I have a few more crochet items that are finishes. Uh, these, I am continuing working through my scraps of cotton yarn, uh, following along with the hashtag on Instagram, a make along hosted by the Back Porch Fiber Company, and she is hosting a dishcloth mal for. Uh, 2024 and I am enjoying pulling scraps and putting them together so this pattern all three of these are the same pattern it is the let's see let's see I had it and then it was gone corner to corner moss stitch dishcloth by agate rotman and I was gifted this pattern so thank you uh who you know who you are who gifted this to me I really appreciate it and this is like my favorite favorite dishcloth pattern currently um so this one I combined a white and a very patriotic colorway and I just love the texture that that moss stitch creates and this one is so cheerful this one is really springy or summery even i really like that i just think those colors are so pretty together and i'm trying to be kind of uniform in size but sometimes i get going and i do a little bit extra <laughs> but i'm trying to i kind of like this size this one's just slightly smaller just slightly smaller than this the other one so I like I like this size so I'm trying to you know from here on out trying to get to about that size uh, this was my most recent one and this is a Christmassy one 
Uh, those other two were made using like the peaches and cream or lily sugar and cream. This was made using um, scraps from Hobby Lobby. I love this cotton. And um, both of these two yarns are Christmas themed yarn. And um, I love this color green. I don't I don't have the tag for it anymore, so I don't remember what the color is, but I really like these together. And it's it's really fun just coming up with these combinations. And I think I think they're working for the most part. I think what I'm choosing kind of goes together. So it's been really, really fun. Uh, my drawer doesn't seem to be uh, diminishing though in, in stash. I still have plenty of cotton yarn down there and cotton scraps. So I don't know, it, it will be interesting. I still have my picture from the beginning of the year. So I think at the end of 2024, I will take a picture of the drawer and see what kind of dent I have made in my cotton yarn, cotton yarn scraps. That will be interesting. One more finished object for today, another crochet, uh, this cute little bunny coaster. Uh, this pattern is called the Seamless Bunny Coaster by Nikki Castellani, I believe that is. It is a free pattern, crochet pattern on Ravelry. Um, <clears throat> it is definitely not beginner friendly, when I saw it, I thought it would be more beginner friendly, and it's not, but it's, <laughs> it's okay. Uh, so two things make it not so beginner friendly. Uh, the, the cute little tail there is made with the popcorn stitch, which it's not, it's not too hard to execute at all, but it's definitely not a beginner stitch. And then the ears, you know, you, you crochet the circle, and then the ears are made with a foundation single crochet. Um, and so that, that may be a newer technique uh, to crocheters. Um, probably a lot of you have used that one, but I, I don't use it often, so I always have to review how to do that foundation um, single crochet. So it took a little bit of time working through the ears. Also, I was holding two strands of cotton yarn double because I wanted it not the ears to be too floppy. They flop a little bit, but they're standing pretty good. <laughs> I think they're standing up pretty good. The yarn I used on this was Knit Picks Dishy, and this was in, let's see what color, white. Yep, white and then blush, the pink. So held those together. Um, uh, the... The circle that she gave, I know I talked in my last episode about my crochet basket and how I used a, a different tutorial for how to make the, the rounder shape, you know, a true circle as opposed to more of a hexagon. And this designer did uh, make some adjustments in her pattern so that it would not be... Um, that hexagon shape that it would be more circular. So I, I do appreciate that she took the time uh, to do that. And I just think that turned out really, really cute. And it used up some more cotton scraps. So that's a good thing. Yes. Yep. So that, that is it for my finished objects. Uh, whips. I have been working on whips. Uh, I'm going to save my last one, uh, which has gotten the most work, but we'll go into some others first. Uh, this is another crochet dishcloth. So using this yarn, same pattern, and going to continue on. I'm almost out of this. Continue on with this yarn. I think that matches the blue in there really good. And don't think I'll need any more than this, but if if I were to run out of the blue on here, I probably would um, go to a white because I definitely have some white scraps left over. So I don't I don't pick up these crochet wash or dish cloths too often, but they really are nice to have on hand when I just you know have a few minutes and just sit down and do a row or two. Yeah, that's really really fun. So working on that, I have um, 
Oh, I do have one more crochet thing. This is almost a finished object and it probably could have been a finished object. Um, the crochet part itself is finished, but the finishing part is not. I'm just grabbing the pattern here. Um, I can't, yeah, this is a paid for pattern, I believe. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna share the picture. It's by 3AM Grace Designs. And this bunny looked so much to me like those peeps, um, you know, the the yellow peeps for Easter candy, but then they have all the bunnies too. And the purple bunnies, it reminded me so much. Um, I had been looking on line just for patterns similar. And this one to me looked most, most like that candy, which I thought was really fun. Uh, this particular designer, 3AM Grace Designs, has some other candy crochet designs, which um, I know there were Sour Patch Kids. That's the only one I can think of off the top of my head, but they were really quite realistic looking to what the candy looks like. So I thought that was really neat. Um, you know, I'm working through my stash this year. I did not have a purple or like a bright pink or anything. And so I really, really debated about getting a skein of yarn to make this, but I'm like, no, just use something in your stash. So this might be a little, a little outrageous, but I had a bright purple in my stash and I mean bright purple in my stash, <laughs> um, fingering weight yarn. So I held it double. I think I'm still coming up slightly smaller than the worsted weight that it called for. And this is much more vibrant purple and more, um, you know, there's, it is a tonal yarn, but there's some variation to it. So it's not like a true solid. Um, and it's, it's darker. It's a darker purple than what you see here. But I figured, you know, this was a pattern I just wanted to try why not use this yarn? This yarn has been sitting on my shelf for some time. Um, I can't even remember why I bought it. I know I would have bought it with a purpose. I know I would not have just, you know, gone, well, maybe I would have just gone and bought a, you know, bright, bright purple skein of yarn. I actually really, really love this. Um, this is by, I gotta think about this, Mint Rain yarns. I think I have that right. And it's in the night bus colorway. So that is a Harry Potter reference. So some of you probably would be familiar with that. Um, but such a fun color. So I thought, you know what, it seems kind of crazy to break into a brand new skein of yarn to make this bunny. But it took, let's see, these two parts together is about, um, I think it was 12 or 14 grams. So after the finishing part, I still would have enough if I wanted to do a pair of socks with this. And I'm not sure if I would do a solid pair of socks with this or if I would combine it with another fingering weight to make a, you know, DK weight pair of socks or if I would use this and just, you know, do a contrast color for heel, toes, and cuffs. I may very well do this, but I do think this bright grapey, color is just so fun. Anyway, <laughs> I have the two bunny parts made. Uh, it says to weave in the ends, which I suppose I could, but you actually just put these together and I'm figuring maybe I could tuck these in as I, uh, it probably would be easier just to uh, weave them in. And then you stitch around the the, the whole thing, leave a little bit for stuffing and do that. Uh, it also has safety eyes on there. So I do have some safety eyes for the eyes and the nose. Uh, so hopefully, well, I, I do want this done by Easter. <laughs> I think it would be fun. So next time I will be able to share this as a finished object. Very, very clear to follow. Uh, this pattern is very well written. Um, you know, after making Amelia the duck with all her parts, um, I'm not like a super big, um, like stuffy person or like Amagurumi. I don't think I will ever get into this, to that too much, 
but this was really, really easy to crochet. I, I did both parts on the same day um, and just, they've been sitting on my table by the couch, just waiting to be seamed up. So <laughs> that needs to happen. But if you are looking for an easy, quick project for Easter, this would be so cute for kids in their Easter basket. I kind of wish I had a little one to, uh, you know, to put in an Easter basket. I think that would be so, so fun. That is it for crochet now. So on to some knitting projects. I have two socks that I have been working on. One you saw the last time, and I basically just had the cuff and a couple rounds done. So I haven't done a tremendous amount on this, but um, this is kind of just, I've just been picking up here and there, but a decent, a decent-ish amount on there. The yarn is uh, Sweet Georgia Fibers in the tapestry colorway. And I shared last time that this is very old yarn, well, not old yarn, but it's been in my stash for quite a while and I was very smitten with the color. And I will say as I'm knitting, knitting the leg up now, um, I, I really am enjoying the color. I think it will be perfect, perfect color for fall. So I guess I'm getting a head start on, you know, fall socks. Um, don't know if I'll keep them for me or if I will make these into gift socks, but that is my progress on that sock, just a plain vanilla sock. Then the next sock is a brand new cast on, which I did share that I had hoped to do. So I am doing this sock um, I'm on sock number one, and I am doing this for Darcy of Chit Chat Knits. Uh, she is hosting a make-along uh, in her Ravelry group and on Instagram. The hashtag is KnitLitMel24, so make-along, knitting literature, but KnitLitMel24. And the idea is to uh, come up with a project that pairs with a children's book and then as you make the project, you can also purchase the book and gift it somewhere to a charity, could be to a church, to a hospital, to, you know, a free little library. You know, those are really cute popping up everywhere. So, um, I happened to have a couple skeins of children book themed yarn in my stash, which I've had for a couple years. So I thought this was the perfect time to knit this up. So I am working with Night Owl Fibers. The yarn is Chicka Chicka Boom Boom. So here is the colorway and I am just about ready for the toe. And this is not a plain vanilla sock. You see this beautiful cable going down the sock. This is a uh, the newest pattern by Brenda K2P2 Designs on Etsy. I have knit one of her patterns. I have two of her sock patterns on my Make Nine sock board. When I saw her working on this sock on her podcast, I was really excited about that one cable going down. This is actually the left sock, and then the right sock will have the cable over, you know, on the other side. Uh, very fun pattern. It is called the road goes ever on and I will link the pattern down below and her pattern for this is based on another book and I'm not going to remember what book it is Brenda but I thought how fun her sock pattern is based on a book and we're doing the knit lit make along so this is chicka chicka boom boom if you know the book you can absolutely see those colors in there so Night Owl Fiber, and then my contrasting heel is by um, Up North Yarns, and funny enough, I made another Kaiza tee in, in this color, and so I had a bit, a bit left. So that's the heel in that color, and I'm also going to do the toe in that color. I am absolutely loving this yarn and this 
pattern together. It is super fun. Um, I was getting my hair done a little while ago and my hairdresser was like, oh, that yarn is so fun. So Rachel, I love, love your yarn. And Brenda, I love, love the sock pattern. So sock number one will be close to being done. So those are the two socks that I currently have on the needles. So you can see that one sock really got a lot, a lot of love. <laughs> Just really been enjoying the cable. The project that has gotten the most work is my Cozy Memories blanket. So this is a scrappy blanket, which I believe has been on my needles since, I think the pattern came out in 2016 and it was either 2016 or 2017 when I cast the blanket on. And I just kind of would lose steam on it a little bit, or I thought, well, it's something I'll pick up every once in a while and add a couple of squares. But as I've been adding squares, I realized if I want this blanket to be done anytime <laughs> within the next several years, I just have to buckle down and just do some focused knitting and make that blanket a priority and not keep pushing it to the back side. So this blanket is on my Make Nine Whip board. I'm really excited to be working through some of my outstanding works in, pro works in progress. So let me share this with you. And I'm going to insert a picture to show you exactly the parts that I have done or the direction of the blanket. And I'm also gonna try to share it share it here but it's getting kind of big so <laughs> and i do have markers marking all of the squares so this is the top of the blanket so there are two four six eight ten twelve fourteen except i haven't finished that one so it'll be 14 squares across so i have finished those 13 at the top and we can talk through these a little bit. See see how much <coughs> that I remember. Excuse me, I've been teaching today. My voice is definitely a little tired. This yarn here is by uh, Sweet Tea Yarns, Molly Klein Design. That was paired with a mohair to make my first love note. Uh, this, I don't know the company, but this was a yarn I knit Jeff's sock with. This, I believe, is a Maker's Haven yarn. This, I do not remember what the yarn is, but I, I believe I made a shawl for a Christmas gift a number of years ago. <coughs> Excuse me. Not sure about the gray. I know this is a Yarn Cafe Creations. This, I believe, was from a Strawberry Shortcake mini skein set. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm so sorry. <clears throat> <clears throat> let's see this one here I think is a Woolberry fiber company from many years ago this may have been from an advent calendar so all of these yarns were used in projects uh, this was a pair of socks for Jeff this was a mini skein from um, that I used from an advent calendar this is by, oh, come on, Woolen Homestead, um, which I really loved her yarn when she was dying. This is Hank's Yarning Company. This I used in my um, City Limits sweater combined with a pink yarn. Uh, yeah, so that was used in a sweater. So I have those 13 done. Then I come over here and this second column down, I guess. So underneath it, these three here. So starting right here, those three I used in my uh, Carla's garden shawl last year. And that yarn was by Skein Cocaine. This beautiful purplish color yarn is a Volen vine yarn. I want it had something to do with love or love song. Yeah, it was from quite a while ago. So I've done those, and then I've done this 
the whole length of this one, except for the top. <laughs> so 14 or 13 squares here. Uh, so green at the bottom was used in socks. Uh, there are actually three different yarns in here, which I made a shawl for a friend last year. This yarn is part of a um, either Freckled Whimsy or the Cozy Knitter, one, one of the Advent striping yarns. So just part of the part of the striping sequence. Uh, this is Sweet Tea Yarns in the Romy and Michelle colorway. I made a pair of Slipperoo socks for. Uh, this yarn I knit a birthday pair of socks for an Ohio State fan. Uh, this right here is um, the Little Women Christmas yarn uh, by Night Owl Fibers that I used uh, last November, December to knit Christmas socks. Uh, I believe this is Biscott Yarns, a watermelon self-striping. This is a Knit Picks uh, hand-painted tonal I got for my birthday last year from my birthday knitting birthday buddy. This was from an advent calendar. This is another year of an advent self-striping yarn. This one is... I want to say, oh, Teeny Button Studios, I think from her um, Legally Blonde collection, that one, Cosmo Girl. Uh, this Christmassy one here was definitely from an advent calendar that already got used. And then the one I'm currently working on uh, is this, it's a self-patterning yarn that I knit um, my husband's aunt a pair of socks for her birthday last year. So it is really, really fun going through and pulling all of these yarns back out and adding these squares. So I think I'm going to count really quick. Let's see. I've got little progress keepers on each one that I finished. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. So I have made 29 and I'm on the 30th square um, since I last podcast. I am super excited that I have made this much progress and this is really all I kind of want to knit on right now, um, which is going to make for not maybe as interesting of a podcast. So I know I need to probably mix things up a little bit, but I'm kind of in a groove. Um, that picture, maybe I'll put the picture back in. We have a blue blanket in our living room. Um, you know, I just got it at Dollar General. It was, you know, like a fleecy, really soft blanket that we use in our living room. And I like the size of it for covering up, laying down, taking a little nap. And so I laid that out on the floor and then I put the blanket on to see how much more I wanted to do. So the blanket started out as 13 by 13 squares. That's, that's about where I was when I picked it back up. And I laid it against the blue blanket and I thought, okay, I definitely want one more row widthwise. And so it's going to be 14 rows widthwise or 14 blocks widthwise. And then if you look on that blanket, you can see I need about four more rows to make it the same size. So four rows of 14 would mean I need 56, 56 more squares. So that's still a lot. <laughs> that's a lot of knitting. So <clears throat> I'm kind of wondering if I want to continue pressing on with that or put that away for a while and pick up some other things. I'm just, I'm not really sure. I kind of like that I have some momentum going on this. And I think I do want to add an I-cord border to the whole thing when I'm done, which that will take quite a bit of time <laughs> too. So I know there is quite a lot of knitting still left on this blanket, but 
just adding all of this has made me realize, you know, if I don't put in these big chunks, it's never going to get done to the size that I want it to be. And I really want it done because it is super fun when I see it all laid out with all of those bright color squares. It just looks so patchworky and scrappy. I just absolutely love it. So I really do want this, um, I want this blanket. I want I want to have this in my living room or craft room or on my bed somewhere. It needs it needs to be. So <clears throat> we'll see if it will get continued on. I think I'm going to continue, but maybe not at the rate I was doing this month. So I'm really sorry about all the coughing. So those are my Yarny works in progress. Uh, the last thing I have to share as far as works in progress, I I really like how I've done the make nines. I like making progress on those, but it's also allowed me to try or to do some other things. Uh, I did share on an episode ago, I think, or two ago, that I finished that little knitting cross stitch. Wool is where the home is. <clears throat> uh and I do follow, I think it's all the stitches, uh, with my friend Colleen. Uh, that's her podcast. It started out as a knitting podcast, but then she's definitely or knitting and quilting. And now she's, you know, lots, shares lots of all of her crafting. You know, she is an amazing crafter, knitter, quilter, and cross-stitcher. Well, she shared this project I think on her first podcast in 2024 or one of the first ones in this year and I just thought this would be so fun so let me share this and it's kind of wrinkly I'm not the best I'm not a floss tuber <laughs> but hopefully you can see this this is a temperature cross stitch so the the pattern let me read the pattern is flying geese temperature cross stitch pattern by stitched modern i purchased it as a uh, pdf download on etsy and it's the flying geese quilt pattern but you do a um you know a triangle motif each day and it represents the temperature for the day so each range of five degrees um approximately is assigned a cross stitch or is assigned a color it is done in the dmc floss uh, and you can see that first row was kind of cool that was the first part of january and then you can see we've had some really crazy warm. This this represents a day that was over 80. So, and that was in February. <laughs> so we get some really chaotic, crazy weather. Um, comparing it to my friend Colleen's, she lives in New Hampshire, I think. And, you know, her first couple rows are so beautiful. The cool blue, blues and greens. And, you know, hers, I think, is more aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> and mine looks random and chaotic, which is very, very appropriate for the weather in Nebraska. <laughs> it's very fitting. But this is really fun. I believe I am, let's see, March 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. I'm caught up through the 16th. So um, I, I'm a couple days behind. But I usually wait till... Um, you know, I didn't start this right at the beginning of the year. I didn't start till February. So I had quite a bit to catch up on, but now I'm, I'm keeping up on it fairly regularly. So I'll do it every couple of days or maybe once a week, I'll take the time to just like stitch a few days worth. Um, so really, really fun. Um, a very manageable cross stitch project. I used to cross stitch a lot when I was younger. I took it up in junior high and high school uh, through my probably mid twenties, absolutely loved it. And then set aside for other things, um, some sewing things and doing craft shows and then crocheting and knitting and absolutely knitting has, <laughs> has overtaken, you know, that's, that's my true love is of crafting is, is knitting right now, but it has been really fun. 
to uh, do a very easy cross stitch project. Uh, very fun to document the year of 2024 in Nebraska and uh, just see what our temperatures will be. I, you know, I'm envisioning, you know, the summer months are going to all be very, 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 very hot. And I'm not looking forward to that. If you've been around with me a while, you know, I do not enjoy the heat, um, but maybe I will enjoy it in my temperature cross stitch. We shall see. All right, so that really is all of my uh, works in progress that I have been working on. So it, it has been a lot of fun the last several weeks um, to work on numerous different projects, crochet, knitting, cross stitching. I've just, I've really enjoyed uh, my crafting time. Um, I want to share a new pattern with you. Um, this is by Ashley Coons. She is my handmade day on Instagram. She is a pattern designer and has several patterns, both knit and crochet on Ravelry. And she gifted me her newest pattern. It's a sock pattern. It is absolutely beautiful. I'm gonna insert a picture here. It is called the Tulip Fields Socks. What a lovely, lovely color work pattern for socks for spring. It is just perfect. And I told Ashley, it kind of reminds me of the area where I grew up in Michigan. We weren't in this town, but pretty near where we lived um, is Holland, Michigan. And that they are known for their tulip festival there. So I was kind of envisioning that as I looked at that beautiful pattern that Ashley had designed. So uh, this will probably, this is not probably going to happen this spring, but this is definitely something I would like to try in the future. It is just, just beautiful, Ashley. So congratulations on that new pattern. Uh, and I will link that down below if any of you would like to check that out. I would highly encourage you to check out her Ravelry shop. Uh, so we are at March 20th now, so more than halfway through the month. Um, but a couple things that I am thinking about working on back here, I have this, it's got a few things in it, but this bowl that I made last year, uh, this is a pattern by, uh, Margaret of Heidi and Lana or Heidi and Lana. And I made this bowl. I had bought the kit but the yarn comes with enough to make two bowls. So I actually have the yarn in there. So I would like to make another bowl for a gift knit. And then I have a whole nother kit and I can't exactly remember the colors. I want to say like cream and gold. And so I would like, I'm gonna, this is the medium size bowl. Let me just, I've got, I've got stitch markers in here too. So. Here's, here's the bowl. Yep, so really pretty on the bottom. And it's got the cute little sheepy tag on the side. So this is considered the medium size. And then I think I'm going to do a smaller one in, in the cream slash gold. Um, but I have the yarn to make three more baskets. So that is something I definitely want to pick up this month and work on. Uh, other than that, um, I am thinking about a shawl, you know, a one skein shawl um, for a gift knit, um, but still debating about that. So, so we'll, we'll see if that happens, but definitely the bowls I want to make and then continue on with the current projects that I have, and we'll see if I get to um, any other projects from any of my Make Nine boards. Yeah, so I think that is all I have to share with you today. I hope I remembered everything. It has been so fun uh, catching up with you all. I, I apologize for the delay. I did not intend to be gone as long as I was, um, but March just got away from me. It's been a busy time with uh, teaching and um, playing the organ for church. And now we're entering, you know, 
almost Easter, so I have some extra services next week with that. So just kind of a busy time, but a really, a really good time too. <laughs> so I hope that you are all doing well. Are you uh, casting on new projects for spring? I would love to hear what you are working on. That is that is so fun when you guys comment. I really, really appreciate those of you taking your time to comment. So I'd love to hear what you're working on. If you've stayed with me this long, I would greatly appreciate it if you'd hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't. So hope to be back with you guys in a couple weeks. Uh, take care and I'll say happy Easter for now. See you real soon. Uh -huh.